Okay, we are back. So, our uh, next speaker is uh, Raul Huertas. Raul has been around in the Spanish C++ committee, I think almost from the beginning, or just at the beginning. And uh, he currently works at Jan Heinrich. I don't Jan know. Heinrich. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, when I lived in Germany, I was told that it should be Heinrich. Uh, I don't know. My pronunciation, my German pronunciation is not that good. Okay. So, uh, he is going to give a talk about ASIO and C++ coroutines. So, this is not the only coroutines uh, talk that we, you will have in this conference. So, let's see. Enjoy. Okay, thank you. So thank you. I only have 20 minutes, I guess. Sure. Okay, <laughs> this is not going to work. Uh, anyway, thank you for putting this talk after the coffee. I really appreciate it because this is called, could be the more boring of all them all. So innuendo taken. Okay, let's, let's start. So coroutines, again. You know, the thing is that everyone seems to be talking about them lately. Uh, I just want to be uh, someone else. Uh, but, uh, you know, the thing is that I found it easy to find explanations about the why, the what, and how. But I'm not that sure that the why is explained enough. So, uh, I want to give you a slightly different talk, an experiment. Uh, see how it goes, uh, and I want to give this talk in a different way. I want to tell you a story about a day in your life if you work with Asayo and coroutines. Okay, so this is you working with Asayo and coroutines. Nothing fancy here. Okay, so this is the plot. Okay, the year is 25. I will not dare to say the century because this is C++. We never know how, how long it will take. So, yeah, uh, this is a normal day at work. This is your work. You are just trying to beat that speed run and doom, okay? And suddenly your boss called you. Uh, it seems that we have a program called Middle, first time you hear about it, and has some performance issues, first time you know about it. And your boss ha has an idea on how to um, solve it, this performance problem. <laughs> so yeah, this is a horror history, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you go to the, your boss place and he starts talking about this middle, middle thing and he says that this middle thing is doing something process, first time you hear about it. And uh, he shows you this schema, okay? This, this middle problem has some problem. Okay, the first thing you realize is that you really need a good marketing department because top, middle, and bottom, really? <laughs> that's, that's everything you can come up with? So yeah, but these are the, the names of our executables, top, middle, and bottom. And it seems that middle has some performance problems. Okay, um, so the thing here is that uh, this middle process is just uh, trying to sync both top and bottom. So first it received uh, some messages. Uh, during this sync process, it received a list of messages from both top and bottom, a list, in this case, A and B from top and B and C from bottom. Then it will uh, compare both lists, okay? And uh, the difference are reported by means of this ADD message. For example, A is in top but not, not in bottom, so we send an ADD A message and uh, C is in bottom but not in top, so we say, uh, we uh, send that. So yeah, seems pretty easy, some key points. Um, first of all, this program is sequential. This is, you know that this program is asynchronous, it's coded using Asayo, it's an asynchronous program, but it's sequential in the mean that first we read from top, all the elements from top, then we read from bottom, all the elements from bottom, and then we send the, the difference for, to both of them. And you know for sure, that's a new thing that you know, that the lists are ordered. So AB and BC, that's the correct order. 
So your boss has an idea. Okay, if this list are ordered, okay, then what we can do is in this uh, place here. What we can do is just read one element at a time, and whenever we found that one of them is less than the other, we can just straight away say send an ADDA. So for example, uh, we read A and B, send an ADDA, then read for only from top, B and B is the same, read from both, B and C, we send, we send ADDC, and yeah, that's it. So yeah, it seems reasonable, it seems so it seems that this is going to be uh, uh, more performant than the, the previous version that you have. And this is a problem because you have now to implement it. And take into account, this is the first time you see this code. But we are using Asayo and Coroutines. And as you will see, this is going to be so much easy, much easier than expected, I hope. So let's see. Uh, let's inspect our current code. So, you are a good programmer, and instead of inspecting the code, you just go to the traces. So you just execute the program, okay? And uh, yeah, thousands, thousands and thousands of, of traces. But this one takes your attention. Reading top sync, this could be the, the trace that signals where the process begins. Then it seems that we are reading from both uh, lists, A and B. And uh, yeah, then we are comparing them and sending the, the message. So yeah, this, this could be the trace that we are looking for. So go to the code, inspect all the millions of lines of code, and you find the, your trace in that function do sync. So this is the first time you see this code, OK? OK, uh, by the way, I, it doesn't fit in one slide, so it's two slides long. But yeah, we will get back to that. So there you have it. Uh, the first thing you notice is this co thing. So this is a coroutine. And yeah, you spend like a month uh, hearing, going to classes about this coroutine, but the only thing that you get is that this co thing is the way that you just need to call an another coroutine. So if you have a function that is a coroutine and want to call another function that is another coroutine, you just need to put this co thing. And yeah, that's it, enough. And uh, yeah, the other thing that you remember is that you can't return a simple value. You, in order to have proper coroutines, you need to return some special values. In this case, this is a boost asayo coroutine, experimental coroutine, okay? And yeah, you remember this. It's too much complex. Don't care about it. It's working. So yeah, forget about it. Just put a void there. And this is a do sync function that just return <coughs> So, yeah, by the way, this TCP socket, it's another Asayo object. This is a TCP uh, socket. So, yeah, we are using Asayo and coroutines. So, let's start from the beginning. What is this function? Read lines until end. Okay, you go to the code. And again, it seems to be another coroutine. So, this is another coroutine. But this coroutine doesn't not only have this co weight, it also has this co return. Uh, because C++ is so fun, you can't use return. Uh, some committee guys decided this, <laughs> I don't know why. So you have to use core return instead of return in a, in a core routine. That's it, so get with it. And this cogil, this cogil is the amazing thing about core routines. This cogil means that you can return a value, in this case, content, and the next time this function is called, is going to proceed from that, po from that point on. So let's see if we can understand this function. I think it's pretty easy to read. First of all, we create a buffer. Great. While the socket is open, we call this another uh, coroutine, async read until. Async read until is an Asayo function. Uh, you know about this because you've been working with Asayo. This function is uh, able to read from this socket, put the content read it in, the, in, in that buffer, until it reaches a uh, carriage return. Okay, so this function just reads uh, whatever is in the socket and put it in, in our buffer. And then you have this, and yeah, for sure you should know what this means, but believe me, it's not necessary at all, so keep with your life, forget about it. Okay, next line. Uh, 
we are getting like a super string of n minus one. Okay, n is the number of uh, elements greeted until the carriage return. So yeah, content is returning everything but the carriage return. So we are reading uh, a line from the socket and storing it in content. If content is equal ends, so if we have read a line with an end, then we just uh, stop. This is the correct end, so we just stop. Otherwise, we return that value, and the next time someone calls us, we will remove that value because we, are, we don't need that anymore and go back to this line. So this is pretty amazing. It's really easy to read, and it does what its name suggests. It read lines until end is found. Pretty easy. Okay, so this is the line. That line is doing preparing uh, another coroutine for the bottom socket. Great. Then we have this vector. Let me put that here. And what is this line doing? Okay, this line um, is calling the first coroutine. But this is some kind of a strange way is returning std optional. If you remember, there are two ways that this coroutine can end with a coroutine or with a cordial. So you can either have a value content or no value at all. And the way that Asayo handled this is with an STD optional. That's pretty amazing and you don't have to do anything for it. It's free, so great. Uh, so here we are just reading the first line of, of our file. So uh, if there's nothing to read, then it will return a null optional but otherwise it will return some value. So let's assume that we can read A, B, and in. Uh, we enter here, put the value in our vector, easy, and then just call again this uh, coroutine. And this coroutine is going to continue, read the next value, and we are going back again, storing another value, reading another value. Now we reach the end, and because of we have reached the end, we just stop doing this while loop. The exact same thing is going to be done for the bottom socket. So yeah, this is pretty easy to understand, I think. This is a synchronous code, okay? Take that into account. Okay, and then the rest of the function, I think this is pretty easy, I hope. Uh, these lines are just comparing both lists. Uh, the difference goes to this in top, but not in bottom uh, <coughs> vector. The other go to in bottom but not in top. And then it seems that we are just iterating over those elements and calling another boost assayo function. Okay, the again is the same. We just need to uh, write some bytes in this TCP socket, this message ADD, whatever. And yeah, uh, uh, again, that use core thing that you can just forget. Just copy and paste the code as good programmers that you are. Yeah. Uh, okay, and the next line is the, 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 the next part is the exact, is the same but for the at bottom but not in top. So yeah, that's it. Pretty easy to read. So I don't know how much time do I have, but we need to implement this in that time. So let's see. Uh, remember, we are doing core routines Everything is asynchronous, and we just need to copy and paste code. Believe me, it's that easy. So first of all, we need these two coroutines, yeah? So copy them. Uh, the name of the function of the coroutine, it's okay. Copy them. Okay, if you remember, what, what we need to do is read one value at a time, one value from top and one value from bottom. So this is the way to do it. You have just copied the lines that were before. This coway up reader is going to read from up, and this coway down reader is going to read from the down bottom, from the bottom socket. Pretty easy. Okay, now we have a value from both sockets. What do we need to do now? Uh, so let me put a schema here. So assume that we are reading th those values. Okay, while we have values in both uh, sockets, okay, that's the why, uh, we are going to check what happens. Uh, for example, this first is this else. Uh, up, uh, the content of up is not less than down, the content of up is not greater than down because they are the same, so we are here in this else. So what do we need to do here? Okay, we just need to advance both 
um, uh, coroutines. Just call that function. You just call this up reader with this co away thing. We are going to advance both of those pointers, so to say. Uh, they are not pointers, but yeah. Okay, now we have another case. In this case, uh, the content of up is less than the content of down. So what do we need to do here? Okay, we need to first send a message to five minutes. That's my boss at work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, okay, so we need to advance, um, um, uh, we need to send a message to, uh, to bottom because we are sure that bottom doesn't have that element. And we just need to copy the old, the old lines that we have. Just call co await, async write, and that's it. Great. And then advance the pointer. Yeah, that's it. Simple. Again, uh, the same values. And what happens if is the other way around? We have to do exactly the same, but with top and bottom uh, swap. So uh, send the message to top, and then advance the, the down pointer. Here, that's it. This is the same case. OK, now we have reached, in this case, we need to keep consuming from top until then there are no more elements. So we need to do another while. And what we do in this while is the exact same thing. We send ADD to the bottom socket and advance the pointer. And the same go for down. That's it. We have managed to finish our program. This is asynchronous. You can be doing a thousand of these operations per second, and this is going to work. But does this compile? Yeah, it compiles. <laughs> yeah. So as we say, if it compiles, it can go to production. So yeah, here we go. <laughs> uh, no, the, the amazing thing is that I made this test by myself, and I was able to do it the first time I tried. So this is really, really, really amazing. Um, so some key points, uh, all this code is asynchronous. You can be doing this with thousands of top and bottom programs and it's going to work. Uh, I think it has been pretty easy to read and understand, maybe because I've been working in this talk like six months. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's pretty easy to, to understand. But also, I think it's pretty easy to modify. And this, is, this can... This can be the thing that we get if we use coroutines. A very simple code to inspect, a very simple code to write. So for me, this is amazing. Just go back to that speed run. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you. So you did. Wait, wait, wait. Hey. You did in no two, two minutes before. Yeah, so we, that means we have One space question. for questions. <laughs> well, yeah. They are co-awaiting. <laughs> <laughs> no questions? One question over there. Oh, over there? Well, oh yeah. Okay. <coughs> How is use coroutine different from use awaitable in I, I can hear how is use coroutine uh, different from use awaitable uh, awaitable do you mean awaitable like or, or there is a CO use awaitable I haven't used awaitable I'm sorry Okay, so there is a, a thing in Azure like is uh, user waitable that ah, okay, you will okay. you make your user waitable. Okay. Yes. So okay. how is it that side? different? Uh, okay. In fact, I'm using user uh, user by waitable. That thing that I haven't wanted to show you to you that use core or unused thing that was an alias for user okay. waitable Fair. and, and thing. But you know, I don't want to get into that details. Uh, we have a better talk for that. I hope. And yeah, this this is, you know, the, the feeling that you will get if you were just a normal programmer with, that doesn't know a thing about coroutines. And I don't want to talk about that. But yeah, they are using the same. Yeah. OK. Any other question? One, two. No more questions. Thank you very right. much.